name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've uh, just read out from the Nicene Creed. And uh, assuming you are paying attention, it concluded by saying, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We're just one week before Holy Week. As we're looking each year, the heart of Christianity is Jesus' death and resurrection. And at the heart of Jesus' resurrection, uh, Jesus said, because I live, you live also. So because Jesus rose first by faith in him, we look for the resurrection of the dead as believers and the life of the world to come. It's amazingly good news. We're looking at Luke, uh, uh, John chapter 11. You know, it's right before Easter, the gospel passages get longer, and that's a Lenten discipline. The fifth Lenten discipline is Bible reading. There's a big emphasis, and in John's Gospels, you notice there's these wonderful, true uh, stories that we're looking at Lazarus, and this is such a famous passage that it's quoted in virtually every funeral or celebration of life uh, that we go to. And at the clergy, as we walk into the service, we'll read out this passage. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. That's our theme, never die. And though they die, yet shall they live forever. The life of the world is focused in Jesus' resurrection. What did he do on the cross? He destroyed death. The last enemy to be destroyed, according to the Bible, according to Hebrews is what? It's death. And Hebrews also says that people that don't know Jesus uh, they're literally in slavery to the fear of death. They may not be able to name it. Look back before you knew Jesus. Some of the most dysfunctional behaviors, if you trace them, uh, they're usually related to the fear of death. How many remember that movie where they talked about the bucket list? Yeah, before you kicked the bucket and they both had cancer and so they, and some of the things that people do before for their bucket list are exciting and wonderful and some are very foolish. And we, we need to know the difference. Now, this rather lengthy uh, passage be begins by talking about Lazarus being sick. And, and he's the brother of the famous Mary and Martha. And who would forget Mary and Martha? Mary sitting at Jesus' feet. And Martha doing what? Organizing the next holy tea and needing volunteers. And remember how frustrated she was getting, and so much so, she triangled with Jesus and said, Jesus organized my sister. Now, the fact that she had to talk to Jesus suggested that communication between sisters was kind of lacking, wasn't it? They, they, they didn't know how to communicate, and that can be true in our families. And so she's trying to go through Jesus, and what was Jesus' answer? Yeah, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and very distracted, but Mary has chosen the greater part at Easter and Holy Week. We want to put other distractions aside. It's our opportunity to be near me, to sit at Jesus' feet. And 
so when Jesus hears about Lazarus being sick, he says this amazing thing, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, was Lazarus's sickness unto death? In, in one sense, it was. It's the paradox of the resurrection of life. He literally died. He wasn't sleeping. Yeah, yeah. But there's something that Jesus is trying to get across. As believers in Jesus, we never die. Bird and Megan are more alive than the rest of us in the same time's congregation. Ah, a good percentage of the St. Simon's congregation in the last 71 years have already been promoted. There may be more St. Simon's members on the other side than here. Yeah, and over 71 years, you marry a lot of people. How many people here uh, were at St. Simon's for the first service in 1945? You're all newcomers. Uh, relatively speaking, our oldest St. Simon's member, who is a shut-in, is Ashley uh, Carr, who turned 95 years old. He was back at St. Simon's in the 1940s with his dear wife, Rita. How many remember Rita? And she's on the other side. Now, who is more alive, Ashley or Rita? Yeah, read it. They're not going to be married in heaven. I'm sure they'll be good friends. Now, it mentions in verse 5 that Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. If there's anything we know about Jesus, what is he? He is fully loved. That children's son, Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. John. 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross that whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have eternal life. Jesus perished on the cross that we would never perish. Christianity is a death and life religion. And so the, the, the mystery, the paradox, the dramatic tension of oh, this amazing passage, it said because he loved Miriam and Martha and Lazarus, that when he heard that Lazarus was sick in verse 6, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. What a strange thing to do. We got a, a phone call from Adele. He stole, and she was over at Marianne Carvel's, and Marianne Carvel uh, was moving. We we're actually visiting Stuart and Margie Spady. Mark and I uh, were there having delicious soup. Thank you, Margie. And Adele was feeling stressed be because there were still 20 uh, large boxes that they didn't want to do with, and the place had to be cleaned out. And, and so, Mark and I, because the St. Simon's theme for 2017 is overflowing with hope, serving one another. That what a great chance to serve one another. We went over there, and for another five uh, to six hours, we, we helped get six, uh, 20 more boxes into the storage. And uh, the storage looked as if it was full. But Mark dug his way into the back, and then I went to get more stuff, and the boxes collapsed on Mark, so I dug Mark out, and it was quite an experience. Now, how do you think it would have been if Adele had phoned, and, and we said, we love Marianne, so we're going to wait another two days to come move the boxes? Do you, do you think Adele and Marianne would have appreciated? Would they have felt loved? This is the paradox. 
Why does Jesus take so long sometimes in answering prayer, in death and resurrection? And then after another two days, he said, let us go to Judea. Again, and the disciples, they said, Master, the Jews of late have sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again. If you read John chapter 10, they picked up stones after he said, I and the Father am one. They picked up uh, stones, and, and so Jesus answers in verse 9, and 11 in this mysterious way it's about there being 12 hours in the day and walking in the night in the light and they're, they're probably going, what in the world is he talking about? But Jesus is the light in the darkness, isn't he? And then he goes on in verse 11, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. I go that I may awake him out of sleep. And then they're confused and they say in verse 12, well, if he sleeps, he's doing well. How many of you thought you could have a little more sleep today? But you came to church anyways. How many slept in so you didn't come? You know, that's always the temptation. So they're thinking, Lazarus is just sleeping. Oh, but Jesus actually means he's dead. And so finally Jesus, in verse 14, he speaks plainly, he said, Lazarus is dead. And he said, I'm glad for your sake that I wasn't there. Isn't that strange? Uh, to the intent that you may believe, nevertheless, let us go with them. And so, dear Thomas, uh, who was an interesting character, he, he said, well, let us go also, that we may die with them. So, Thomas is kind of getting it. This is about death. Isn't it? Everything is leading up to Jesus' death and resurrection. And they figure, you're going to get bumped off. And they were right. Now in verse 17, when uh, Jesus got to Bethany, how long had Lazarus been dead? He'd been dead four days. And the significance of that in the Jewish tradition, uh, some of thought the spirit, the human spirit, would still be hanging around, maybe uh, for up to three days, but after four days, there would be uh, no mistaking that he couldn't be resuscitated. We're speaking about dead, actually uh, dead. So Jesus delayed, so there'd be no confusion that this is raising him from the dead. No. When the Jewish people came to greet him, the first person to greet him uh, was Martha, and Mary didn't even come. And Martha, the practical one, she says in verse 21, uh, Lord, if you'd been there, my brother would not have died. Now, what kind of space do you think that Martha is in? How might she have been feeling? She'd be very upset. She might even be angry. Is this what love looks like? It says Jesus loved them, so he delayed. And sometimes Jesus delays in our life to prayer. They don't feel like love, but they are. And Jesus goes on to say, Thy brother shall rise again. And Martha just is pushing this to the afterlife. And she says, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus, at that point, uh, quotes what I mentioned happens in every funeral. I am the resurrection and the life. What an amazing statement. We've heard it how many times? Hundreds. But this was the first time. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That's the Easter message. That's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. And he that liveth and believeth and me shall never die. Believest thou this? That's been asked of each of us. If we believe it, it changes us. If we don't, it does us little good. And Martha said, Hey Lord, 
I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, who shall come into the world. What a wonderful confession. You are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. You're come into the world. And then she calls Mary, her sister. And Mary uh, arises. And Mary comes up to Jesus. And what does she do? Uh, according to verse 52, she, being a really expressive person, she falls at his feet. And remember, she's the one that uh, anointed his feet with her hair and anointed him with oil. And she's saying, Oh Lord, if you've been there, my brother wouldn't have died. So the two sisters are saying, the same thing. They're, they're, they're caught up in deep grief. And when Jesus, verse 33, sees her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, and there's nobody who weeps like at a Jewish funeral. It's very intense, they even hire weepers to get people started. Uh, Jesus groaned in the spirit, and he was troubled. This was not a platonic to test Jesus. This was a Jewish Jesus entering into their trauma. And he said, where have you laid him? Did he know? Of course. And then they said, Lord, come and see. And the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. What a, what a powerful verse. How many think you can memorize this one? <laughs> Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And in verse 36, then said the Jews, behold how he loved them. There's something about weeping. You know, we're in a culture, sometimes if you don't weep, they commend you at the funeral, celebration of life, for how well you do it. Some people even self-medicate, so they will have no emotion. They, they go through the service as if they're not there. But Jewish people, when they love somebody, they weep. We, we would do well to learn weeping and love go together. And in our home group on Thursday at Genevieve, we went around and said, you know, is it easy for you to weep? We, we talked. Uh, ben, a number of people said, no, it's not so easy. I think our Anglican background uh, doesn't make it, the British background, it doesn't make it as easy to weep. But remember when Princess Diana when she died, all that repressed British grief, it exploded. And they weren't just weeping about Diana. It was all their parents and their siblings and, and all that grieving. All that grieving. And then they said, you know, he healed a blind person. Why can't he help last week? Good question. And Jesus still groaning. He comes to the grave and he said, Take ye away the stone. And they said, But but he stinketh. That's another verse you can memorize. He stinketh. Well, they got it. That the truth about each of us is we are Lazarus. We stinketh. We stink. We are mortal. And we don't like to face our mortality. We don't like to face it. He's taken. And Jesus, first where he said, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou should see the glory of God. You see, Jesus, that's what Holy Week is all about. The glory of God, his death for our sins, his mighty resurrection, that's the gospel. And they take away the stone and Jesus is praying in thanksgiving. I thank you, Father, that you hear me, and, and I'm praying so that they may believe. We want others to believe in Jesus' death and resurrection. And when he had spoken, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And that's what we are speaking as God's church. We are calling forth the dead to live. All around us are dead people. If you don't know Christ, you are dead in your sins. And Jesus, through us, is calling people of Lazarus, 
comes forth. There are many nominal people that turn up at Easter, and we can say that Lazarus come forth from the dead. And in verse 44, he that was dead came forth bound in and foot with grave clothes. Uh, looking very strange. I uh, think almost maybe some unimaginable figure walking, stinking, but alive. And his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. When people like with the festival of hope come forth from the dead, the thousands that came forth, we get to take part in removing their grave clothes. That's called discipleship. Are you willing to help people remove their grave clothes? That's discipleship. And many of Jews believed in him. If you were there, would you believe in Jesus? Would have got your attention. It would have got your attention. What amazing good news. What amazing good news. If you believe in Jesus, we will never die. Look around you right now. Look around you right now. These are people that by faith in Christ are never going to die. You will know them for eternity. They will never die. Isn't that amazing good news? And our loved ones that know Jesus that have gone before us, they are more alive than we are. That's, we have so much to look forward to. I believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Holy Week is worth getting excited about. Let's pray. And dear Jesus, forgive us when we are treated, when we think we've heard it all before and our, our hearts are not open. Open us up, Lord, to experience once again, as for the first time, the mystery of Holy Week, of your death and resurrection. And Lord, use us in calling forth the Lazaruses all around us, the dead who need to come to life, that we will help take off their great clothes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.